Psalms 37, 1 through 7. Fret not yourself because of evildoers. Be not envious of wrongdoers, for they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Be still be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in this way, over the man who carries out evil devices. Okay. So you read that whole section there. Now we're going to go through and kind of break this down. Try to find my camera. Break this down like little section at a time, little piece at a time. First, uh, let's look at verse one and two. Okay, we'll reread it. Fret not yourself because of evildoers. Be not envious of wrongdoers, for they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. Don't. Basically, this is saying don't worry about evildoers. They will soon fade. Right. The implication here is that you will have to wait, at least a little bit. It says they're going to fade. They will fade soon, but that's not immediately. So you may not have to wait a long time, but you are going to have to wait out some of this. This is this is what's being said in Psalms. Um, obviously, uh, we've talked about this before. This is not instantly applicable to you and everything in your life or me and everything in my life. Um, but Old Testament is is there to show us the, um, the attributes of God, the... the how God is the, yeah. So verses one and two, um, is saying that, you know, you have to wait that he is, he is going to, God is going to take care of these evildoers, but he is going to have to wait at least a little bit of time to, to work through this. Verse three, uh, trust in the Lord and do good dwell in the land and be friend faithfulness. So trusting in the Lord requires trusting in his timing. Okay, we see here talks about dwelling in the land, befriend faithfulness. So in the waiting, you are still working towards developing, like we've already talked about some of the other fruit, cultivating some of that in your life, cultivating patience in your life, trusting God. And that's, that's ultimately what patience comes down to is just trusting God. Now, verse four, this is probably... Either one of, if not one of, it is probably, if not the most, it is probably one of the most misused and abused verses in the Bible, especially when we are looking at prosperity preachers, especially when we're looking at prosperity preachers, um, and things of that sort. So verse four, delight yourself in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. So first, taking delight in the Lord means that our hearts are truly at peace with him. And we we truly find fulfillment in him. Okay. So we've already talked about peace, what that is, how to cultivate that. So finding or delighting ourselves in the Lord is that we are, we are doing that. We are finding our fulfillment in God. Now, if we do this, does that mean that God's just going to give us whatever we want? No, because I can be trying to do that and still have some wicked desires. And it doesn't, God's not going to give me, allow me to have Or give me what what my wicked desires are because that would be harmful for me. So a lot of times prosperity preachers will will use this to kind of talk about exactly that. That you will get what you want to have. But really I I think the proper way to understand this verse is that if if you delight yourself in God, God will place the desires that you should have in your heart. The desires that your your heart should desire, 
God will give to you. And you can see this, you know, as, as you mature in the faith, as you continue to grow, to develop godly character, you will desire ungodly things less and less and less and less and less. And eventually, you know, I'd, I'd even say it generally starts, it, it can start very, very quickly. Um, I think with most people, it at least starts very, very quickly. I do think that the closer you get to God, the more time you spend chasing after God, the more appalled you are at some of the things that you used to enjoy, that you used to want. You, your, your dislike and distaste of those things becomes even greater the longer you are pursuing God. And that's, I mean, you, it, it'd be around anybody that's, that's had any type of a conversion story like that. And, and you see that. So that's verse four, verse five and six, commit your way to the Lord, trust in him and he will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Um, so think about a high school football player committing to a big, big, college or a husband committing self to his wife in marriage now it's not exactly this when you think of the the high school player but these are intended to be lifelong commitments you know the the football player the the college athlete it is for the life of the athlete's college career the intention is not that these would eventually be revoked it is it's supposed to be a commitment something that you stick with that you hold on to okay i have another analogy and <laughs> bear with me it's not perfect because it's it's just a negative situation it's a negative thing but the idea of the commitment is there so think of if someone if someone commits a crime now the crime's done there's no going back. You have once you commit the crime, the crime is committed. You cannot like go like no matter what you do, you cannot go back and uncommit the crime. You can try to do things to make up for that, but you can't go back and uncommit the crime. It, you just you can't. So it's this idea of when you're talking about when it says here, commit your way to the Lord. It is the the idea of turning it over completely relinquishing all control to god now that is that is control of the overall final circumstances that is control of the timing of every minute detail and this becomes even more difficult because typically and uh this was kind of touched on actually in service this morning. Uh, I was in, our pastor was talking about, you know, it's, it's easy. It really is. It's easy to listen to the spirit. We complicate things. And he's talking about in, in acts, we see where, you know, Peter is told to, uh, uh, Cornelius sends men to, to Peter, to bring him. And Peter's just told, go with them. And Peter just went, and Peter didn't have to think through what he's going to do and all this other stuff. Like he, the, the command was simple. And if you think about it, it's, it's kind of like that too with us. If let's say I go to get gas, I've had this happen before. I go to get gas in the local gas station and I see somebody walking out and I, I feel like I need to go talk to him. Right. And I, I can tell it's a Holy Spirit thing because I'm not the type of person that just wants to go up and have a conversation with somebody I don't know. That's not me. <laughs> and so if I feel, hey, I need to go talk to that person, I can pretty much guarantee it's it's the Holy Spirit working on me. Now, I can get in my head very, very quickly and think, okay, well, I need to, I need to have a plan. Like, what am I going to say? How, how am I going to respond if they say this? What are some possible things that they could they could say, or they could come back to. And, and like by the time I, I've wrapped my head around enough to where I can 
feel confident that I can go in and talk to them and answer questions and, and, and rebuttal and stuff like that, like they're gone. I, I've squandered the opportunity. So that is a simple, simple thing. Go talk to them. I don't need to be ready. It, like if, if I'm, if I'm being obedient, I'm just going to be obedient. I just need to be obedient. Delayed obedience is disobedience. And so in that situation, I need to make sure I do a better job about if I feel like I need to go talk to somebody, I just go do it. And I trust that the Holy Spirit's going to give me the words as, as they, as I have need of them. So yeah. Um, it's, it's the idea of, you know, like I said, relinquishing all of it to God, the, from, from the final outcome to the timing, even down to the, the smallest, most minute details. Last verse seven, it says, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way over the man who carries out evil devices. So verse seven, um, waiting patiently on God and his timing and not worrying about people who seem to be better off while living wickedly. Okay, the only way, the only way you can do this is to have full trust in God's plan, will, and timing. Not just one aspect of that, all of it. Complete trust in God's plan, in God's will, and God's timing. Thanks for watching all the way through the end. Don't forget to hit the like button, comment down below, let us know what you thought of the video. If you liked it, didn't like it, give us some feedback. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you never miss when we come out with new videos, which is pretty frequently. Thanks. God bless.